Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Bo Gable. Thanks for being on the show, Bo. Whitney, it's my pleasure, and I truly appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts on your platform. I'd love to provide any value I can to you and your listeners, so thank you. Awesome. Well, Bo is an active duty ranger qualified infantry officer and values based real estate investor. He started investing in real estate in 2015 and became passionate about investing alongside his family and friends. He is a long term buy and hold investor that has focused purchasing and operating commercial multifamily uh, since 2018. Uh, Bo, it's incredible to have him on the show. And uh, it's an incredible story how uh, he, I've known Bo for a few years now. But Bo, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been incredible to see your journey uh, and where, you know, where you're at now. I want to thank you also just for your service. I, I love just having men and women on that, that have served our country and, and just personally want to say thank you. I know the listeners uh, are saying thank you as well as they're listening, but uh, tell us a little more about you and, and, uh, uh, and, and get us started just in your syndication journey. Yeah, Whitney, I really appreciate that. And that, uh, you know, it means a lot from somebody that also shared some time over in the sandbox as well. So um, I appreciate you and everything you've done too. So before we get started, Whitney, I do think it's a very unique situation that we have because um, it wasn't three years ago that we met at a, you know, at a RIA right outside of DC and you were traveling for work and I attended that one regularly. But, um, you know, at the time that we met, we were both aspiring commercial multifamily investors with no investments yet under our belt. And we had immediate chemistry, um, and developed a relationship immediately. But, you know, whenever you left, the last thing you said, I was, I was just confused and thrown off by, cause you said, you know, I'm not really interested in any markets right now. I'm not looking at any markets because I'm uh, going to get this podcast started. I'm going to start building a podcast. And I was like, that is such a unique way of going about it. You know, it, it was mind blowing to me. Um, and man, I am so impressed with where you come to and all the success you've had. And it's obviously, you know, uh, attributed to your, to your dedication and your skills um, and just who you are as an individual. And there's nobody that deserves success more than you. And so, you know, I feel obligated as one of the few people that knew you really was during the transition point, um, whenever you're about to start, you know, and to celebrate you and your mission and what you've achieved so far. So wow. very much appreciate the relationship with me. Yeah, you as well. And grateful for that, Bo. And uh, I, I don't, I don't feel like I deserve it, but it, it's definitely not been easy to get here. And, uh, but it's been great to see your success as well. And, and it, I, I remember that night I was, I was traveling for work. I was in DC and I thought, and, and you, the listener, I just want you to think about this. Uh, you know, as I used to travel for the day job, when I'm in another city, I would always look up well, what meetups are around here. What's happening yep. tonight as far as real estate meetups. And that's, that's where Bo and I met, uh, you know, at a, at a local meetup, a real estate meetup. And so, uh, again, thanks again for that, Bo. Well, get us started on your journey and let's talk about you. Yeah. So a little bit about me. So, uh, as you guys know, my name is Bo Gable and I'm the luckiest guy that's ever, that you've ever met or not met yet. Um, I was born and raised in Southern Indiana and I'm very fond of my people back home and a uh, very proud Hoosier. Um, I've got the biggest extended family that any, of anyone that I've ever met. Um, and I'm very proud to be a part of that family, very grateful for them. So after high school, I graduated um, and played football in college at Georgetown College and then joined the military. And Whitney, you may appreciate this because I uh, really wanted to be a Marine, but I didn't like the taste of crowns. So I decided to join the army. Um, and I've had a blast. I'm going to get some hate for that one. I've had a blast for the eight, past eight years, you know, as an infantry officer. And along that path, I'm very grateful because I found uh, my next true passion, which is real estate in 2015. Um, kind of stumbled my way in with a lack of guidance and uh, very little knowledge, but, you know, just completely obsessed with how to make this, you know, I just, I thought of it very small compared to what I think of it now, but I'm very obsessed with what that, the power of it and um, had that aha moment um, 
you know, whenever I transitioned my first primary home into my first investment property or our first investment property. Um, and we started small and took baby steps from there. Um, you know, acquired a duplex and a couple other short-term rentals. That's what we focused on early on. And then 2018, uh, we've been solely focused on commercial multifamily. And um, so, yeah, we set our goal of closing on our first commercial asset in 2019 and missed it exactly by 23 days, um, which is fine. But January of 2020, we closed on a 68-unit apartment complex. And that, coupled with our uh, other smaller personal portfolios, um, is about $3.4 million of assets under management. And I'm happy to talk, you know, through the whole gamut of any concepts that you think is going to provide some value. Yeah. So why syndication, Bo? Why, why choose to go commercial uh, real estate and, and choose to syndicate? Yeah. So for me, Whitney, I think it, you have to look at the asset class right first. So commercial multifamily, I think is for so many tangible reasons is the most powerful wealth building vehicle out there. Um, you know, it's scalable dispersion of risk, you know, partnering with just really high level performers and, you know, you couple a high, the highest risk adjusted return with, um, with, you know, extreme tax incentives or tax, uh, you know, tax benefits, you know, and all of that combined. And then you have this social impact of providing home to people and memories of people. And that, that's very, it's aligned with my goals and what I want to achieve in life. Uh, it's very fulfilling for me. And syndication, on the other hand, you know, is, is coupled with that. So I'm a multifamily syndicator and syndication's an incredible tool, essentially that you can just, it allows an operator like me to partner with people, with individuals to create teams and then leverage each other's expertise or their, um, you know, their resources. Um, and this makes, you know, a powerful way. This makes, you know, syndication a powerful way of just fulfilling each other's goals and establishing, you know, mutually beneficial um, teams. So I seek my personal goal, and this is all about fulfillment, but it's, it's this, I seek to, to share this opportunity of investing in safe, reliable, incoming producing uh, assets, which is apartment buildings in this case, um, with people that I care about, with my family and friends. And so that's what kind of drew me to syndication. Nice. Well, I want to jump into that, maybe that 68 unit or, or just some steps that you took to get to that deal. But I want to ask you too, you know, how, how did just the military or maybe ranger school just affect your, your real estate business? So the military in general um, has been tremendous. Uh, I've been very fortunate to be a part of it. Uh, I tell everyone, you know, I think there's different tiers. And for me, Ranger School was an obsession. And so I, I, I love touching on this. And I, I talk to all of my peers and any of my soldiers that, will, that care to listen about how important Ranger School was to my personal development, um, you know, as a leader, as a soldier, you know, as a person in general. Um, and I really wanted to be a ranger for so many reasons. And so many of them were like high level, like idealistic, romantic reasons. Uh, but I, I truly became obsessed and that's like the only way forward for me. And so that was my priority. So just super focused on that for a long time and, and very grateful for the opportunity. But I think uh, your, your listeners could really get some value from some things that, that, you know, in hindsight, I can translate into how that's built me as a leader and, and also you know, how it translates into real estate. Um, there's three real things that Ranger School did for me as a tactical leader, the military officer. And, you know, number one, it made me extremely confident in my small unit tactics, um, you know, which is crucial to lead on the battlefield or, you know, if, if be in the arena of leadership, if, you know, if you don't know the ins and outs, um, you're, you're going to suffer uh, or you're, you're, worse, your men and women underneath you are going to suffer because of that. So um, my ultimate motivation throughout it was just visualizing me in the future as the commander in ground during a tick or, a, you know, a firefight and seeing the leader that I needed to be. And that leader is the absolute best, you know, the men and women that would be serving under me or the units to my left and right, you know, deserve the absolute best. And um, while that is not as heavy in the real estate game as a syndicator. I still take, or, you know, I, 
I like to think I aspire to take the exact same care of other people's money, you know, especially whenever it's loved ones. And, you know, I always want to be connected to my capital partners. I don't even like calling them investors. You know, they partner with me on deals. Um, so then we can go down and, and work together to, you know, and, and buy a, and, you know, benefit everyone involved. Um, and yeah. so extreme confidence, you know, it gives me chills thinking about some of the scenarios you kind of helped us visualize there. You're talking about being, uh, it's just, it's just crucial when being a leader, uh, and no doubt that's helping you build a, a team and, and just be successful in leading a team now into a business. Uh, you know, the stakes are so much lower than when, you know, you're overseas, uh, you know, and, and being just mentally in that game like that, uh, you know, or I, it's not a game, but, uh, you know, overseas, it's so important. Uh, you know, when lives are on the line, I like to say, you know, just the military gave me that just the never give up mindset because it's just not an option, right? It's just Absolutely. not an option. Uh, and so it love that, you know, extremely confident. And, and so, you know, yeah. And what were the others? Yeah. So I guess I love what you just touched on, though, Whitney, and I'm going to come back to it um, whenever I talk about myself. But uh, Ranger School in general and just leadership in general in the Army, uh, you know, really taught uh, me how to how to lead people, even at their worst. And specifically, you know, um, whenever people are three days past their breaking point, which you often are in some of our training exercises, you know, absolutely exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally, um, fatigued and, and really morally uh, susceptible to do things that you normally would not do. Because, you know, as they say, uh, you know, hard times don't build character, they reveal character. And I mean, you find out what you are at your core whenever you are just stretched to your max. And so, you know, I, I've learned, you know, specifically that people don't really care whenever the, everything's on the line, you know, people don't really care about how much you know t until you've demonstrated how much you care about them. Um, and that's very intrinsic to who I aspire to be like. Uh, so it's, it's definitely translated over. It's, you know, you have to invest the time and be there and, and how to be the best, you know, in every situation, even wherever it's not necessarily your neck on the line, wherever it's somebody else's and just um, be a servant leader, essentially. No doubt about it. Wow. No, thanks for sharing that. I think even, you know, the listener that hasn't been in the military, it's just great to hear those things, you know, and to think through that and just the, the level of dedication, you know, that it took in the military, but then how that's translate, translated to a successful real estate business as well. Uh, anything else you want to touch on on that before we, before we move on? The last thing, last thing, and I promise this is the last thing, it's just so much about mindset. So you learn, it taught me more about myself than anything that I could ever know. So, um, you know, there's a funny thing that can happen to you whenever you, you know, the power of your mindset. And there's funny things that can happen to you whenever you don't stay strong in mind, whenever you're broken down to your absolute limit. And your brain, you know, you learn the psychology and, and the fun things about that, but your brain's an incredible tool. And what you focus on in the state that you maintain yourself in absolutely determines your behavior more than you ever, than your conscious thought ever could. Um, and just an example, I mean, there's some mountains that you walk up during some training exercises after like, you know, you're a few days after you're breaking what you thought was your limit. Um, and no joke, you, you're walking up these mountains uh, and you look off and the most appealing thing to your brain, if you're just focused on your pain and your internal suffering is falling off a hundred foot cliff and hopefully just breaking some bones, you know, bodily harm to yourself. And being able to internalize that and focus on the goal or the mission ahead or the objective or, or maybe just for me, it's always helpful just to focus on the guy next to me um, or gal next to me. And, you know, that's been able to persevere. And once you can do that, I mean, you're, you know, our true potential isn't even tapped into until we've risen to the higher levels. So. Nice. Wow. No, that's incredible. Uh, our true potential is not tapped into until then. Wow. 
Uh, you know, Bo, let's jump into that first syndication a little bit, that 68 unit deal. Uh, you know, give us a, obviously we, we don't have a ton of time, unfortunately, or maybe we'll have to have you back, you know, to talk about this a little more in depth, but, but I'd like to uh, just know a few things that were key for you getting to that first syndication and getting it closed. Maybe a couple of things that you learned. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to provide a whole lot of value to people that are like very successful, which you have the top tier individuals on your show and listeners for sure. But for people that are just getting started, I think one thing that helped me tremendously is uh, find somebody that you really aspire to be like, somebody that you really want to be like. Um, you know, and the and this again transcends all different things. But for the military, I aspire to be like Chesty Puller or Dan McChrystal or you know. George Patton and, and as leaders, you know, you got Teddy Roosevelt or Abraham Lincoln or, you know, other just heroes of mine. Uh, my father is a huge hero of mine, but, you know, break down what you like about that person and the traits that they carry and then find out ways to improve yourself to be like that. And if, um, if that's not necessarily applicable to you, if, if, if you can't, then how do you compliment that person and, and provide value to somebody like that? Um, then, you know, you can easily find a teammate that, you know, has those strong traits. And then you just strive to provide value to those people. Um, my person, you know, Jason very well, but Jason Stubblefield was my hero in real estate for a while. Uh, and he doesn't even know this and I can't wait till he, I'm just going to tell him to listen to this episode because I mean, I strove to be like Jason. I was like, how, how can I find, how can I provide him value? You know, whatever he said was gold and I did whatever he said. And, you know, I, I learned so much just by thinking through, um, even wherever he wasn't around, I just aspired to be like him. Um, and we developed a strong relationship. And, and to be honest with you, Whitney, what happened was uh, that gave me the confidence. I was like, hey, I know, you know, I had this simple conversation. Hey, Jason, you know, if I find something that's a great deal and it meets, meets all your criteria, what are your criteria? Well, can we partner on it? You know, can I just bring you the deal and then, and then work through the process and you look over my shoulder and, you know, I'll do all the work. You just, you know, whatever I had to do to provide him value. And that gave me the confidence to go after any deal of any size. Um, you know, I failed at I failed at a few syndications, but um, one, one that never went through few fruition um, was 284 units before I ever had, you know, the biggest thing that I owned was a duplex because I knew that I had team in place and people that could tackle something bigger. So uh, that's, that's definitely, that's awesome. I mean, even just right there, you, you had someone that you knew uh, that, that was already doing deals, already syndicating deals are, you know, I know Jason personally and, and we've been together numerous times and, and a uh, great guy. Uh, and, and, but, you know, just, it's great that you knew somebody like that. You had somebody in your corner that you could ask questions to. And like you said, now it just opens up this big door of, of opportunities, right. Or that you didn't even see available before. It gives you this, you know, next le level of confidence, uh, you know, in the business. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you attach yourself to whoever that is. If you don't organically find that, like I was fortunate enough to do, um, which if you go out and you, if you uh, network enough, you're going to find people that you aspire to be like and just pr try to provide them value. But you can easily find a coach or a mentor through a paid, you know, that's providing them value by actually giving them money. And they can provide that exact same service probably in a, in a more expedited way. Um, but I took the old school long route, you know. No doubt about it. Uh, Bo, Bo, what's been the hardest part of this syndication journey for you? Yeah. So, um, honestly, Whitney, I think <laughs> retroactively looking at what some of my weaknesses are, um, it's been really difficult for me to touch the people that I care about. Uh, I've really wanted to impact people back home, people in my family. And I'm, I think my ego gets in the way a little bit cause I'm, I'm a little afraid. I've got fear that leads, leads me or constricts my, ability to talk to them, to raise money from them, to partner with them on this, on any future deals. Cause you know, it's a pretty um, special relationship between whenever you're taking some, someone else's money. And I, although they are the people that I strive to be like, uh, or aspire to serve, um, you know, at this point, 
getting my name out and really advocating what I'm doing in real estate uh, has been a, uh, a difficult, a difficult thing for me to do. So, Bo, I believe anyone that's successful in, in almost any business, especially this one, has a high level of self-discipline. Uh, and, and maybe we've already talked about this, but I, I want to ask anyway, how did you gain such a high level of self-discipline? Oh, Whitney, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I struggle with discipline, self-discipline quite a bit. I would say that when I don't struggle with discipline is whenever I focus on the uh, people that I'm serving. Whenever I focus on either, you know, whether or not for real estate, if that's my, if that's my capital partners, if that's my resident, if that's my family, whenever I focus, like the only reason why I graduated from Ranger School is because I thought about my soldiers in the future. It was not because I was, I will never have the six pack abs because I don't care to have six pack abs. I care to be functionally fit to serve other people. You know, whenever I think about myself, and I, I can be a very lazy individual and very uh, so self-discipline is something um, that doesn't come naturally to me, but discipline absolutely is a key to my success. And it's just w what I'm focused on. So I have to take intentional uh, steps to focus on what gets me going, my why, essentially my purpose. Are there a couple like daily habits that you're disciplined about that, that have helped you achieve success? So it's very small. There's very small things. Waking up and chugging a couple of glasses of water and taking a cold shower. Uh, you know, we work out. I think physical fitness is um, absolute paramount. Um, but even that, you know, I because of a demanding schedule, I kind of cut out from time to time. Recently, uh, just taking you know your 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 miracle morning mindset or. What I truly, I love Tony Robbins or his message um, and just taking the time to prime in the morning and be filled with gratitude and be able to serve people around you and uh, has definitely helped uh, in, in ways that I can't, what's a, you know, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's a way that you've recently improved your business, Bo, that we could apply to ours? Yeah. So for a tactical one, Whitney, um, so we've got a, commercial asset, you know, an apartment complex that we've uh, incorporated some of our short-term rental properties into. Um, so it's about being creative with finding ways to provide value and seek demand. If demand's there, provide that value. And, and then, you know, obviously increase your bottom line, um, which is beneficial for everybody. So what's your best source for meeting new investors right now? organic for sure. Um, I'm not putting myself out there. However, LinkedIn is something that, uh, I have started posting on. Um, and I really enjoy the engagement and have definitely discussed uh, some things. However, I mean, at this time I've got, um, through organic sources, you know, just people that have invested with me, you know, word of mouth and whatnot. Um, I'm very confident that we'll be able to take down our next deal whenever, it comes about. So. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Um, without a doubt, a positive mental attitude. Mm. You know, I've been very fortunate that that was kind of innate in me and then developing that further, uh, that controls your state, which controls your decisions. Positive mental attitude uh, makes you a person people want to be around. And that is, that is what you should always try for. And how do you like to give back? I love this question, Whitney. I really do. And I appreciate it. Um, so as I'm going through and determining kind of my negative triggers, you know, as I'm, I was on, I'm on a journey to become a more virtuous person. And what I've done very recently is started seeking out these triggers that, uh, of negative thought and behavior. And I noticed that I had a lot of negative experiences whenever I saw homeless people um, or people begging for money. And I, and I don't mean it. I hated that, you know, it, it made me feel very bad. And so the best case scenario was either I didn't have the cash to give them or, you know, more likely I was subconsciously judging them if they're, they look like they're middle-aged and could be working or 
you know, just had negative opinions about the situation. So, you know, I made a subtle change behavior wise, but a complete shift of uh, perspective that has helped me maintain my positive state of mind um, that I think is, has been really important. I converted a hundred dollar bill and a hundred singles and without question, without, I just give abundantly. So $2 for any person that's in need. And here's the beautiful part. While I, I hope that that helps them, it has just allowed me to take that off my plate. I don't think about it. I show them a little bit of love and wish them the best, give them $2. And, you know, I move about my day. I don't, you know, hold on to this feeling. Do they deserve it? Are they going to go spend it on something they shouldn't? You know, I just give abundantly and, and hope that for the best and pray for the best. So it's a small step, but it's something that I hope, um, you know, maybe some people could get some value out of. Wow, Bo. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I'm grateful for how you just shared with us today and, and just your journey and getting to that first syndication and just how the military really affected you in a big way, obviously, and, and have helped you, you know, go from, from ranger or infantry officer to successful real estate investor. It's been incredible to like, to, like I said, to see that journey uh, and what you're doing now, uh, you know, and just uh, doing larger, de- large deals. So uh, congratulations on getting the 68 unit closed. Um, and, and it's just been great. I'm grateful for the friendship and, and that we are both here today uh, to talk about uh, what we've done. So Bo, tell the listeners, though how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you well i appreciate that winnie uh very much look look forward to developing our relationships some more and seeing you sometime soon um listeners please feel free to reach out to me it's bo gable spelled gobel i'm sure to be in the show notes at riverside investment group uh, dot com and that's my email um probably right now the best place to reach me is on linkedin it's bo gable again and then or uh, if you're, if I would love to provide some value to somebody that's stuck or needs a little boost, my personal cell phone number is 812-205-7379. And I promise you, I, I'm a, I can stay pretty busy, but uh, I'm committed to providing some value to people if they would like to reach out. So. I appreciate that, Winnie. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success. 